um Emmanuel Safo for me, and I'm going to talk about my whole visa interview process that took place at Côte d'Ivoire on the 8th of May 2023. Did you make any preparations before your visa interview? When I got to Côte d'Ivoire, we were about eight living in an apartment and we were all going for the interview on the same day. The day before the interview, that was on the 7th May, it was a Sunday evening. So on that evening, we decided to coach ourselves, go over some questions to see our strength and our weaknesses. And I cried that evening because I figured that I have nothing in my head. Wait, let me wash my eyes. I was empty. Back then, I felt like I knew enough, but during that mock session and everything, I got to realize I have nothing in my head. So I was really down in spirit. I had to call people to get me questions, how to bring up something, and I have to get my story in order and everything. So that night, I cried and I couldn't sleep. <laughs> So I was awake till the next morning and it was during that morning to that I, I figured that my bank statement was there was a little problem in my bank statement that needs to be faced. <laughs> but it was too late for me because there was no way I was going I was going to find a place to correct that mistake. So I had to take my bank statement with me just like that. So that day I wasn't having hope. I felt like I was just going because I've already booked that point. I have to go through and come back home. So when I got to the embassy, I had to go in for a passport. Because my passport size was so small. Ghana passport size is smaller as compared to the required passport size for the US embassy. So mine was smaller. So I had to get a new passport and I paid doubled because I had to take the picture right at the embassy so that morning as i've already said i was very nervous i was scared and i didn't know what to do so after getting my passport picture i went in line and my interview was supposed to take place at 11 30 but i went in a little bit early i took my interview around 9 a.m so i was in line and when you get to Côte d'Ivoire, even before you enter the embassy itself they have this stand there that we like all, all the people coming in for their interview seat we arrange our documents then it is there that you have to show your MRV receipt, the confirmation page to the security men. They will decide, they will give you a paper like you have to go in at this time. And I was in line, I was so nervous. I was there that this Ivorian guy came to sit beside me and looking at how nervous that I was, he called me, I was like, my brother, what all I can tell you is to relax and trust in your God. That day, all hope was lost, but I, I, I knew that I was going to sail through life. I, ha I had that perception, inside the father I was scared, I had that perception that anything could happen. When it got to my time, I went in, I had all my documents arranged, and one thing boosted my confidence was, you see, when you get to Côte d'Ivoire, you have to check in with one lady even before you see the consulate. I gave her my document and she was like, wow, you've done pretty well, thank you for arranging your document and all that. And I was really, like, I got the confidence that things could go well. So when I, when I was in line, the people that took me through the interview process and everything were getting denied. And I'm like, yo, what am I come to do over here? Because even those that coached me are being denied. What am I going to do over there? So I was really scared. At that point, I got really hungry. I don't know what happened, but I was really hungry. And I, I felt like I should get home and eat some food. But I was already in line, so there's nothing I could do about that. So when I was in line, there was this man, this Avoyan guy. I got to realize he's an Avoyan because he was speaking French. I don't know where his lies, but he was speaking French. So he, I don't know what happened, but he had an argument with the consulate. And the, the woman was really angry. She was really angry. I didn't know what to do. So when it got to my turn, I was really scared. I was dumbfounded. I didn't know what to say. So when I got there, the first question the woman asked me was, why are you here? And the way what she said sounded in my ear, I felt like I understood what she said. And something also told me, I didn't get what she said exactly, so I couldn't talk. I stood there for about 30 seconds. So she was just typing and she got back to me. She was like, oh, you can talk, feel free. So I started rapping. I don't know the exact way that I said, but I started rapping. Then she asked me the next question. I think, you know, she asked me about four or five questions. So after asking me why I was there, she asked me what I'm coming to do here in the U.S. She asked me my school, my course. And one thing, one question that she stressed on was when I completed school and what I've been doing throughout those periods. So I had to tell her everything that I was doing and stuff. And she came back to ask of my age. And I told her my age. 
and she tied for a while and she came back to ask me that same question again how old are you are you sure this is your age i said yes she said so she came back to ask me why i got that scholarship and i so she came back to ask me what job do my father do so that part got me really scared because i knew definitely she was going to ask about my bank statement so i got confused i was looking at her and she asked me again what, what job do your father do and i started telling her what my father does and she was like oh. so that point she didn't ask of the bank statement and i didn't even mention it i just kept quiet so i was just a little scared so i didn't even bring that up so she tired again she came to me she was like it is written here that since 20, you completed school in 2019, so since 2019 to 2021, you were teaching. So what have you been doing after 2021 up to 2023? So I had to go on and tell her everything that I was doing. She felt pleased with it. And one thing I got to realize is that, you see, for the interview, I think before you go, you should fill your DSICC yourself because most of the questions that they ask you are derived from there because they already have to get your details. So you are just going there to confirm whether everything that you provided to them it's true. So I think that is the main thing that anybody should pay attention to. Even if you are not feeling it yourself, you should be beside the person feeling it. You should know every information that you put out there before you go in for the interview. After everything, just saw her pushing something below the counter, like a yellow chip. And honestly speaking, I nearly asked her what I should do with that chip. It was then that something prompted me that whenever that you are giving the yellow chip, it means you have been approved. So I didn't even hear her saying you've been approved. I just took the chat and she was like, go and come back for your uh, passport on the next Wednesday. So my interview was on the Monday. So I had to come for the passport. On. It wasn't Wednesday or Thursday. Go and ask your grandfather. I think it was Wednesday. Yeah. So I had to come for the passport on the Wednesday. And at that moment, I can't even explain how happy I was because I was really happy. somebody that is having a lot of problems a lot of fault with my document and stuff saying god being so good i've been approved i was really happy i nearly jumped inside there but i just had to pull myself and leave this when i left the room i was running i don't know but i just felt like running i went for my phone and i went home and those little period i don't know what happened but all the song that came in mind was um this black Sherry songs i think that's my Favorite song at the moment, all in my head. All in my head, everything I touch is blessing. All I see is blessing. And no man can stop. Could this black sheriff? The song was really amazing. It helped me, it calmed me, and God be so good. I got my face up. Hey! Aboa! It's Hey! So, I had to wait for the passport, and that Wednesday, I was to pick the passport at 3 p.m. But I went in earlier, I went in around 12 one, and I went in with one lady that also got approved that same day. We were two that went in for our passport. When you go there, you won't go to where you had the interview for the passport. They have this counter just the moment you enter the embassy. So when I went there, I just gave them the yellow chair. I gave them my name and they handed my passport to me. And here I am in America, man. Thank you. Turn on to subscribe, bro. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, then we'll talk. Hit the subscribe button. Tell me something. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, Them Good Talk, for more. You know. And if you want the best out of the best about how the interview process is, how about about the school application and everything, just subscribe to this channel so that you will be updated on every information that is put out there. Subscribe to Them Good Talk. I think I like again. Subscribe to Them Good Talk. You won't be disappointed. Check the description for his social media handles in case you want to reach out to him. It will be in the description box below. Thank you.